Here's a good practice problem that I want you to practice with me today. Here's that problem statement and you know what to do. Pause the video. Pause the video. Write down all your givens, the numbers, the variables. Write down what you need to find, what's the unknown, and what units we need at the end. Then proceed with a solution. Maybe you will apply a certain formula, a certain concept you already learned, and I want you to use the FE handbook to arrive at the best solution possible. Pause the video and attempt this on your own. So let's go through this. Assuming you already attempted this, let's see if you got it right. So we have a 48 inch culvert shown below with a projecting entrance with a loss coefficient K entrance of 0.9. And that's what we have in the figure. As I'm reading this, I'm looking at the figure as well. We have a culvert. This is that main section we call the culvert. So the water travels in this direction because it's sloped like that. So it slopes down. So water has to travel down through that culvert and the cross section of the culvert is also given. So it also tells us the culvert inlet and outlet are both submerged. So the inlet is submerged at the inlet here. This is what we call the inlet where the water enters. The outlet is where the water leaves here. It's submerged and we can see that in the figure by the water surface elevation mark. It's here and it's here. So this is submerged. This is submerged inlet and outlet. The Darcy friction factor is given that's 0 0.03. Okay. That's important. It relates to Darcy Weisbach equation, right? We must use that somehow. The discharge in CFS, what does CFS mean? Cubic feet per second through the culvert is most nearly what? We want to find the discharge. Discharge rate means also flow rate. Discharge rate is the flow rate. That's our goal. And that's what we need to find. Let me actually point that out because what we need to find is the most important and Keeping track of the units is also very crucial. So discharge rate is flow rate and that's the Q value as we learned in other videos. So that's cubic feet per seconds is the units that we want at the NCFS. So let's go down and actually denote what we're given. Although a lot of the information is provided for us, but I want to help us visualize this, especially if we're seeing the case where we have a culvert for the first time. I'm still keeping in mind what I want to find at the same time. So let's start denoting what we have. So to visualize this, the cross section view is a little difficult to visualize. Just note this is the top of, let's say a bridge or a road. And that's going to be the top elevation. That elevation is given relative to a certain datum. It's just some elevation. And we see this often how these are given, especially in civil engineering hydraulics. Now, with that said, we can draw that top of the road like this. So I can just visualize that road looking something like that let's say this is the center of the road and that has a top elevation of that road of 110 feet let me point that out like this now under the road is the most important part it's the culvert so there's a culvert that runs under the road and that's there for a reason because that water is gonna travel let's say it comes in from a stream it could be from a development we want that water to go under the road. We can't make it over top the road and we don't want that water to go on the road. So we use the structure, the culvert. So what we will do is denote that culvert. So it's going to be under the road and I can visualize, let's say some soil here under that road, the subgrade. And we can say, this is my soil here. And let me put that soil on this side as well. Now what's important is the culvert. So that culvert is a pipe that's going to go under the road. We can visualize it something like this. It's a culvert pipe and that has a diameter as well. So that internal diameter. And then this culvert pipe also comes on this side as well. So we can visualize that like this. So this is the pipe entering the water enters and it exits here. So what's going to happen again, the water enters here. And the water exits here. And what's good is we're not overtopping the road. That's what we designed this to do. So we want it to be large enough to handle that flow coming in. So with that said, we know that this side is actually called the headwater side. I'll call it HW. We often see this in water resources. This is the headwater side, head water. We call this the upstream side where the water comes in. And that headwater elevation is actually given to be 108. So the real elevation here, the headwater, is the difference between 108 and 98. We take the difference to get that. But just know a key term here in hydraulics and water resources, that's the headwater. 
And then down here, we call this the tailwater is also another important key term. We call that the TW, and that's going to be what's occurring here on this site. So headwater, tailwater. So what's going to happen is the water goes, it travels through the culvert pipe, goes, goes, then it exit here at the outlet. And that's what's going on for this. Now, with that said, that's visualized. And that's what we need to see if you're seeing this for the first time. Let's proceed with analyzing this. Again, we want to find the Q. How are you going to find the Q? So we have a few things. We have the friction factor. This tells me Darcy used darcy Wasbach equation somehow. We're given the diameter of this 48 inches. We're given the loss coefficient. Notice at the entrance. So at the beginning, at the entrance, we have a loss coefficient. We need the discharge. The way we can do this is applying the fundamental Bernoulli equation. Did you use that when doing your solution? It is the Bernoulli, or we will redefine it as the total energy equation because we're going to consider the losses. The minor losses, we have a minor loss due to the entrance, and we have a major head loss due to flow that's accounted by, by the darcy Weisbach equation. So we will use the total energy equation in the solution. And I want you to know this is also in the handbook. Let me go down with you. You can pause the video and find that in your PDF. Minor losses in pipes and fittings, contractions, expansions. And this is the total really energy equation. This is the most flexible form. We account for the Bernoulli equation part, but now we consider the losses here as shown. This is the head loss due to flow accounted by the, in this case, darcy Wasbach equation. Other problems we will do, we can use the Hayes and Williams as well. This is the head loss due to the fitting, but keep in mind, these are the minor. It could be an entrance, it could be an exit, it could be a, a valve, a pipe bend. These minor losses, these are the fittings that we will account for, and that formula is shown here. This is the formula we will use to solve this question. So let's write that down. Let's proceed and say it's P1 over gamma. Then we do plus V1 squared divided by 2G plus Z1. And this equals to P2 over gamma plus V2 squared divided by 2G plus Z2. Then we're going to do the head loss due to friction. And I'm going to label that for us. This is the major head loss due to flow. Then we have the head loss fitting. And what's important about this is this fitting. Just keep in mind, this is the minor head loss. And it could be an entrance. It could be an exit. I'll call it entrance here. And this is going to be the minor head loss. And both of these, as shown by the formula, is always on the right side of the Bernoulli equation. Now, the key thing is this. There's point one and point two. Where are these on this diagram? Where would you put these points? This is very important to do, and this is probably the most complicated when using the Bernoulli. We have to choose these strategically. So where we would put this is start where the water is flowing from, and we're going to denote that here. Very important, at the very top. So point one is going to be right here. And we're going to put point two right here. And we're being strategic. I want to point point one there because it's exposed to atmospheric pressure, which is zero gauge pressure. As engineers, practical designs always, always, always work with gauge pressure. Some problems in fluid mechanics, we will use absolute pressure, atmospheric pressure. That's more of a different question, manometer and things like that. But for practical applications like this, as engineers, we're measuring everything relative to that constant atmospheric pressure. We know atmospheric pressure will always be there. What matters, what our instruments matter, is gauge pressure relative to atmospheric pressure. Therefore, when this is exposed to the atmosphere, because if you imagine this, what's going on here, it's open to the atmosphere. So we have the atmosphere, atmospheric pressure, which is zero gauge pressure. So here we put that there strategically. Then we do the same thing here. This is going to be also the atmosphere. And that atmosphere means zero gauge pressure as well. So we put that there and we know what the water is going to do is travel, 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 travel through this from point one to point two and end here. And the Bernoulli equation said that energy is going to stay constant from point one to point two as it goes from one, goes through the culvert and ends at point two. 
So that's going to be the flow we're going to measure along that streamline with that total energy equation and Bernoulli equation. Those are the points we will specifically pick. Quick pause. Are you serious about passing your civil FE exam in the coming months? Are you looking for an all-in-one program that will help you regain your confidence, that will keep you motivated, and that will keep you on the right track leading up to your exam date? If you're serious about getting started, if you're willing to put in the work in the coming months, check out the link in the description below. And please let me know if you have any questions about the course. Okay, we said we're picking point one and point two as shown here. Point one and point two. Let's start plugging stuff in. So let's start with the pressure at one. What's the pressure at one? What would you put here? Zero. Why is it zero? It's zero gauge pressure, right? As we said, it's at only atmospheric, so zero gauge. So the same is true here. Point two is zero. So I can even say that about this zero gauge at point two. Now let's go to the velocity. What's the velocity at point one? No, it's the velocity at point one, that point one that we picked strategically right there. What's that velocity? Imagine that water. It's a constant head of water of 108 feet relative to a certain datum. You can imagine the datum being sea level. So now that water is just going to stay at that head of 108, head of water. And we know it's not moving. At point one, it's not moving. We know the water travels through the pipe. Yes, this water is flowing through the pipe. But we know at point one, it's just staying static. Imagine a pool of water, that top of the water, the water moves very little. The velocity is going to be close to zero. So it's all relative. That velocity is very small. It's not moving. That's why the velocity at one will be zero. What's the elevation at one? That will be 108. We will plug that in. But now what's the velocity at point two? That's the same concept. That would be zero as well. The water is not moving there. Z2 will be the value of the elevation of 106 that we will use for that Z2 change in elevation, the elevation head. Now we have the mi major and minor losses. So the major loss is the Darcy Weisbach equation. So I can do simplify this for us. Z1 equals, so all we're left with is Z2 plus the head loss due to friction. That Darcy Weisbach equation is in the handbook. You can find that keyword Darcy. So it's the friction factor L over D length over diameter B squared divided by 2G. And this velocity, be very careful, it's the velocity in the pipe. That's the velocity in the pipe or in the culvert. So in this case, this is the head loss fitting. So that head loss fitting formula is actually given right here. It's C over V squared over 2G. This C can be K as well. Some textbooks use K, some use C. So we will... Be flexible and just know that is the K value for the entrance. And that's the only minor thing we have. We don't have any bends and we don't have the K value for the exit or the out, the exit. Typically for a full analysis, we will consider that as well. In this case, we're keeping it simple. We only have one K value for the fitting or that minor loss. So what we will do is denote that as K in this case for the entrance and we have V squared divided by 2g and that velocity is the velocity same as that velocity it's the velocity in the pipe so now we can start plugging stuff in so z1 is going to be the value of 108 feet so we put that and keep that in feet equals to z2 is going to be the 106 feet now we do the friction factor that friction factor is given to be this right 0 0.03 so they give us that if it wasn't we would have to use the moody diagram but that would be a very long question now the length what is the length here what length length of what length of the pipe notice it's this it's 50 feet and we will keep it in 50 feet so we put 50 feet like that for this one the diameter what's the diameter it's the diameter of the culvert that diameter is 48 inches so we have to be careful with this what would you do to inches convert that to feet so we take 48 divided by the 12, and that gives me 4 feet. Convert inches to feet, it's 4 feet. You just divide by 12. So we put 4 feet for that. Then we take the B squared divided by 2. So the V is the unknown, so it's the velocity squared divided by 2 times 32.2 .2 because we're dealing with U.S. units for the constant acceleration due to gravity. So notice one thing is it's the velocity. The velocity is unknown because if I have the velocity, I can find the discharge rate, which is my ultimate goal. Let's keep that in mind. 
we know Q equals AV, right? The area times velocity. A is the cross-sectional area. V is the velocity. Then I can find Q. I can get the area really easy using the circular cross-section. So that's what I need. I can find that. Then what I can do is put plus the K entrance. No, that's going to be the entrance loss that we're given in this at the entrance, K entrance. Typically, we can, we have a K outlet, but in this case, we neglect that because the problem statement doesn't give it. We deal with what we're given in the problem statement. Do not assume anything outside the problem statement. So that would be 0 0.9. Then we have the B squared. That's still the velocity in the pipe divided by 2 times 32.2 for G. Now, all of this, we have one unknown. What I recommend that at this point is simplifying as much as possible. Take 108 minus 106. So we get two feet on the left side. Move this to the left. It becomes two feet. Do the math for this. Put this in your calculator. What do you get? So when you do that, you get 0 0.375. When you do the math for this part. 2 times 32.2, we get the 64.4. So keep the B squared divided by 64.4. Then we do plus, do this, and this is going to be 64.4. So you can do 0 0.9 B squared divided by 2 times 32.2. Again, is 64.4. You can even now combine this and this, and you can reduce this into 2 feet equals... So here we take the 0 0.375 plus 0 0.9 and we get 1.275 combining that front coefficient because they're the same. They share the same term here and we can take this out because it's the same term. So it's V squared divided by 64.4. So now at this point, we can do simple algebra, isolate V or you can use the solver in the calculator, which I show us how to do a lot in the course. So we do and solve for the velocity. We're going to get that velocity on the side once we solve this to equal to about 10.05 feet per second. See if you get that when you solve this on your own. That's the velocity. And to finish this off, all we have to do, the flow rate Q is the area times velocity. So here we will say the flow rate, the area is pi, diameter squared divided by 4. So the diameter, we know it's a 48 inch culvert internal diameter, which is four feet. Let's keep that in feet because we want cubic feet per second at the end. So we take the four feet, we take that squared divided by four, and then times the velocity that we got from the Bernoulli total energy equation, which is in feet per second. Foot squared times feet is cubic feet per second. The units are looking good. So at the end, we will get a value close to 126.29, and that will be in CFS or cubic feet per second. And that right there is our answer. So going back up top, we should, in this case, pick A for this one. And that is all for this. Keep up the good work and always, always take those breaks.